This video is primarily directed at atheists. Not all atheists. After all, I'm an atheist. But I've noticed many atheists, especially of the so-called new atheists, seem to think religion is the most dangerous force in the world, the cause of most of the world's problems. I'm going to explain here why I disagree, and why, for most people at least, there are bigger fish to fry. I'm Chris, and this is what had to be said. I used to agree with those atheists who would say religion is the problem. When I first read The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins, I thought, yeah, I guess I'm an atheist. I also read Sam Harris and Christopher Hitchens. I'm not a big fan of those guys anymore, but one thing they did certainly help me with was to see a, a little bit of how religion affects people and cultures. I could listen to an argument for religion, or even for a given religion, and take it apart, and even know some of the reasons why people made those arguments and believed in their religion. Having the ability to see through another person's bullshit is a good feeling. You feel smart. And if you found your way out of the religion you were brought up with, it feels like liberation. But I didn't realize how far I was from actual liberation. I was liberated from one idea that did nothing for me. One. It took me years more to realize there are many bad ideas floating around and we're indoctrinated into all of them. If religion was the only dangerous fantasy we were expected to believe in, it would be much more powerful. But it isn't. Religion today doesn't have nearly the totalitarian power that it used to. I also learned that Trying to disabuse people of religious beliefs hurts relationships and might just have been an attempt to show how smart I am. No one was impressed. One of the biggest problems with religion, we could probably agree, is when it encourages faith and discourages questions. That's especially true when teaching kids religious dogma because kids question things before things become normal and unquestioned. But religion's not the only thing that discourages critical thinking. School itself is designed to teach us to obey and not question, whether a religious or a secular school. Many parents discourage questions because they'd rather preserve their authority than let their kids think for themselves. Does religion promote this kind of behavior? Maybe. Does it have a much bigger effect than other social power imbalances? What about workplace relations, following your boss's orders all the time? What about our relationship to the state as subjects of its power? Those are institutions of authority that discourage critical thinking. And unlike religious authorities nowadays, the institutions of capitalism are entirely involuntary. They're imposed on us. Religion is imposed on some of us as kids, but nowadays it just doesn't have the same political power as the state and the corporation. When you get older, it's much easier to escape religion. It's not even part of the propaganda in at least half the world. Again, in the past, religion was hegemonic, the dominant idea that justifies holding power. Nowadays, it's just not so important anymore. Well, it depends where you are, of course. Uh, but even somewhere religion is more prominent, it's usually one of a number of ideas people identify with. More to the point, the ruling elite will use whatever ideas are popular to legitimize the social order they impose on everyone else. If we eliminated religion from the world but didn't examine anything else we thought, we would have solved very little. 
A common complaint about religion is that it causes wars. But nowadays, it doesn't. Imperialism the never-ending quest of a few really rich people to get richer by plundering the rest of the world is a much bigger cause of wars, and always has been. Most wars start because powerful men want even more power. Or they use coups or sanctions, which are just war by other means. And nationalism and racism are invoked to justify all of it. That way, when the chickens come home to roost in the form of refugees or revenge, it's never our fault. It's them. They're backwards, whatever that means. If you have a problem with dangerous ideas, imperialism, nationalism, and racism should be near the top of your list. It took me much longer to uproot those things from my brain, if indeed I truly have, than it did to get over religion. Or what about the so-called war on drugs? It's estimated to have cost about a trillion dollars, tens of millions of arrests, God knows how many thousands of people dead, and it could be solved by the stroke of a pen, legalized drugs. That's all it would take. It would put a huge dent in the revenue of organized crime. Hey, but then it would take from the various lobby groups who keep drugs illegal. So it's an uphill battle. But I think it should be of a much higher priority for us than, than religion. Even the Crusades is violence that can only partly be blamed on religion. It's like all these wars. Religion was just the thing the Pope used to trick soldiers into war. Nowadays they use words like terrorism or threats to the homeland and shit, but it's all just more imperialist crusade. Religion gets blamed for terrorism, or maybe I should say Islam gets blamed for terrorism, and terrorism is retroactively defined as any time a Muslim commits an act of violence. Or maybe I should say, the word terrorism is another propaganda word. The PR people use it to refer to anyone standing in the way of what the powerful want. And I'm not going to try to justify any killing of innocent people, but at least when you listen to people labeled terrorists, you can see they're usually trying to fight back against a state or empire destroying their homeland. The same cannot be said for the people who bombed and occupied Iraq, Afghanistan, Sudan, Yemen, Syria, and so on. The question of maintaining power is also a reason for things like the suppression of women and gender and sexual minorities. We use words like patriarchy and transphobia nowadays, and sometimes I hear atheists laugh at these things and laugh at feminism as if there's something inherently objectionable about the idea that everyone's a person regardless of their gender. So we have people scoffing at others for believing in God, while the same people believe in all kinds of bad ideas they've never questioned. Feminism, bad. I don't have to read about it to know it's bad. Government is necessary. No need to question its existence. We live in a democracy, that's all that matters. We have a constitution that makes it a democracy. Democracy means we're in charge. We belong to a glorious civilization built on liberty and human rights. Capitalism means freedom and prosperity. The press is there to warn us if government and business are doing anything they shouldn't. All of these beliefs are misguided, and I've made videos on all of them, so check them out. The point is, it's good to question religion. Now let's question all these other things. Like, it's easy to criticize schools for teaching creationism, and I agree, creationism should be taught as fiction. But schools indoctrinate us in all these lies. Teaching creationism is 
inconsequential next to disciplining children into obedient, voting, tax-paying, law-abiding wage laborers. And teaching science will not change that, because science always has a philosophy behind it directing its research. If you don't question things, you might become an excellent scientist who develops a weapon that kills a million innocent people. You don't need religion to have blind faith. The entire economy and political system operate on faith. But we keep getting these, these tweets from atheists and scientists saying our rulers need to know science better so they can address the climate crisis. Look, it's naive to think they don't know there's a problem and that's why they're not acting. It's because they work for the people who are causing and profiting off carbon emissions. If you think the state can be molded to implement policies that just help most people, you're still falling for the rhetoric of liberal democracy. It just doesn't work that way. When you realize the state works for the richest and most powerful people, and that their interests are incompatible with ours, you realize it doesn't matter how much science they know. So taxing churches is not a solution to anything. The state doesn't need even more of our money when it spends half of the trillions it takes in on war and police and prisons. Likewise, the separation of church and state sounds important, but the state doesn't stop being a vehicle for the rich to wage class warfare on us just because it's a secular state. We should be asking questions like, why are there seats of power available to anyone, regardless of their scientific literacy or their intentions? And why schools indoctrinate us in propaganda rather than teaching us critical thinking? One of my main problems with religion is how it instructs us on morality. It feeds us dogma. It teaches us to feel guilty for perfectly normal, harmless activities like masturbation. But then, some people feel guilty for breaking laws, even when it doesn't hurt anyone, because they've been told to. They feel guilty for coming late to work, even if their bosses are assholes, because they've, they're taught to abide by the rigid efficiency of the clock, and brought up to believe in hard work, even if the work is meaningless. They feel guilty for not watching the news, because they're not keeping up with current events, as if they had a duty to offer up their brains to the media for washing. There you go. Tell me what to think. These are the secular morals of a secular faith. And the dogma is just as powerful. Really, we should figure out morality for ourselves. We shouldn't let the powerful tell us what to think. But we do. Religion is accused of being divisive, but it's no more divisive than nationalism, or supporting a political party, or the outcome of American Idol. It gives people labels that can be used to divide them, but so do all aspects of our identity. And if religion is so divisive, what is rejecting others for being religious? Some atheists have fallen for all kinds of right-wing rhetoric about Muslims in particular, so they think it's just fine to hate an enormous group of people. They think they understand Islam and Muslims, and they think they have enough information on all Muslims to deny them entry into a whole continent. But they're not that different. If you knew each other, you might be friends. In the end, fearing and hating huge groups of people like that is bigotry, indistinguishable from racism. But since 9-11, it's been acceptable bigotry. The right wing needs its scapegoats. So for 20 years now, it's been easy to find them everywhere, spreading lies about Muslims and gathering followers that way. 
They suck in atheists by teaching them to hate Muslims. It's a wedge for them. Atheists who value critical thinking and criticize dogma fall for right-wing bullshit because the Muslims are bad. A wiser person might realize that most people are friendly, helpful, kind, caring, and loving. And Muslims are no different. Religious or not, if you're not filthy rich, we're in the same boat. We share the same oppressors. They should be the target of the vast majority of our attention and anger. Wars, poverty, racism, oppression, climate change, mass extinction, people living in cages or on the street, these things are huge problems that have nothing to do with religion. They're the result of the concentration of power and wealth. These legal fictions of nation-states and corporations, the hierarchical society we've been led to believe in and even defend. Because it's based on dogma. It's just not religion. If you liked this video or learned anything today, please hit like and subscribe and check out another video on my channel. If you hated it, please comment as to why and what I got wrong. Thank you.